Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Wraith Prism Max or Wraith Prism RGB cooler to your AM4 motherboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to show you how to install the uh, oh so popular the Wraith Prism RGB or Wraith Prism Max. Both of them are pretty much interchangeable, there's not a great deal between them. We'll go through and show you some helpful tips and tricks and show you how to set it up, where the cables go, etc and easy ways of actually getting the clamp to fit on your motherboard. So let's start off with a tour of the actual cooler itself. So on the cooler itself, there's various options on here. So there is a low and high switch in this corner here, and that is basically for the fan speed. So in the low mode, it will go anywhere from zero RPM up to around about 2700. If you put it into the high mode, that gives you a little bit of a turbo boost, and will make the fan go up to somewhere near 3700 RPM, which, uh, for some of you, may get a little bit noisy, but certainly, obviously, there is a counteraction, as in it will make things a little bit cooler. So depending on what processor you're using, I would say, realistically, you're probably your best bet is to try it, possibly in the low mode, which it comes in the factory state, and see how it goes. If your temperatures get a little bit out of control, then maybe flip the switch up to high, redo your fan settings, and see how that works out for you. On the opposite side from the high-low switch, there are actually two rubber covers. Now, these are for connecting your RGB connections, so there is a 12 volt RGB, and also there's a connection for the USB. So just peel off the rubbers on there, and that'll give you access to both of those connections. Other notable parts of the cooler. So this is the non-movable side, which is on the same as those connections. And on the flip side, you've got the retention latch. So this is in currently in the open position. So with the lever to the left-hand side, and with the kind of the hump on the top, when it's actually moved round into the other position, that is in the locked position. So when you start off, make sure you've got it open and the lugs are towards the top. Also on this side, we've got the four pin PWM connection, which will attach to the CPU header on your motherboard. If this is a brand new cooler straight out of the box, you'll probably find that the thermal compound is pre-applied on there in this really nice dot fashion. If you've perhaps picked up one of these coolers secondhand or you're reinstalling it, obviously, this will need cleaning up and some fresh place applied to your processor. So let's take a look at the two cables, which are also supplied. Again, if you've bought this secondhand, potentially you may not have the cables included, but there are two main ones. So the first one is your 12 volt RGB connection on one end. And at the other end of that, there is a three pin type block connector. The other cable is a traditional USB type two header. And on the other end of that, there is another connector on the end there which goes into the cooler. You can use both at the same time if you want to. Some people say you shouldn't do. If you're going to be using the Cooler Master software to control the RGB on the fan and the outer ring etc then you can get away with just using the USB one. If you're going to be using your motherboard's 12 volt RGB header then you can use this cable. Both can be connected and if you want to just run both of the cables behind the motherboard tray should you wish to change things up at a later date. So that's enough of the introduction, let's get on and actually install this cooler. So the first thing we need to do is to prepare our AMD board. Now this is the Tough Gaming X570 from ASUS. And as we've got it at the moment, so this is with the CPU removed and also the Wraith cooler, the standard Wraith Stealth, which uses those screw plates there. So what we need to do is to actually go ahead and reinstall the plastic brackets and the four screws, which actually attach those brackets back onto the motherboard. With these brackets, make sure that the lug side is facing away from the processor in the center. So I'll show you that now. So that one goes there, and this one goes here. So as you can see, the lugs are both on the outsides. Next, we can use a cross-headed screwdriver and attach the mountings back on. Do these up mostly tight on the four sides. You can do it in a crisscross pattern if you wish to. Once you've got all four on there, then you can then go ahead and finally tighten it all down. And you can do that in a crisscross method if you wish. When you've done that, make sure it's not loose, there's no wiggle to it. And also you can flip the board around and just make sure that the back plate is actually firmly attached and flush all the way around. Next part, we can install our CPU. So in this one, we're gonna use Ryzen 7 1700X. So first thing to do is to pull the lever away and lift into the up position. 
Then if you look on the motherboard itself, you'll see in the corner, there is a little triangle cut out there, which we'll give you a close up of now. Sadly on this particular board, it's not particularly easy to see, but the actual corner is just down here. Another way of knowing which is the right corner. If you look at the way the actual pins or the holes in the actual kind of retention clip there are, you'll see that the other three edges all have like a, a triangular shape. Whereas the one which actually we need to use to match up the gold tag has a kind of like a square shape to it. Looking at it now after you can see quite easily. So triangle, triangle, triangle and square. Looking at our processor, we can see there is quite clearly marked a golden triangle in that bottom corner there. So that is the one we want to match up with the slightly square cutout on the motherboard. So you line up the processor onto the board and it should drop into position. Make sure that it's flush all the way around. If not, you might need to give it a little wiggle to make it go in. Don't be afraid if it's not gone in completely right just to take the processor out or lift it off and then just place it back in again. Once you're happy that it's in place, using the retention arm on the side, there is a little bit of pressure required. Push it all the way down, and when it gets to the very bottom, pull across a little bit, and it will lock into position on the side here. I'll give you another angle of that now. So from another angle, if we just open this up, so you push it away, and lift. So that is now in the open position, and normally you'll hear a bit of a click. So again, a little bit of pressure, all the way down, and push it into position and that will lock it in. Now we've got our processor in place, we can now apply some thermal paste if required. Obviously, if your processor cooler already has pre-applied paste, ignore this step. For this installation, we're gonna be using Arctix MX4 thermal compound, but obviously you can use whichever you want. If you wanna pick up some MX4 as a spare to keep, if you're regularly changing your CPU cooler, we'll put some links in the video description below. Applying the thermal paste is a pretty straightforward thing to do and we're looking for somewhere between a 5 in 10 mil strip and start just slightly off center. A little bit of pressure on the syringe. And there we go, there's a little blob there. I'll put a measure next to it so you can see what it looks like and to give you a sense of scale. With our steel rule there you can see we're uh, somewhere around the 10 mil mark that's absolutely fine if for some reason you mess up your application then you can just use some uh, some tissue paper and just gently wipe it off the top you can of course if you want to use some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure it's completely clean it's not entirely necessary but some people will suggest the use of it so now we're ready to actually install the cooler so the correct orientation of this is with the amd logo here as it would look normally to you. So this is gonna be in the top left hand corner. This will give you the clamp section on the back or towards the top of the motherboard and the non-adjustable side at the bottom nearest your graphics card. What we're gonna to wanna to do is to actually use the non-locking side first of all and get that hooked over onto the motherboard, which is uh, quite easy to do. and then just rock the cooler down towards the other side. We'll give you a close-up of this. So this is a closer version of this, so hook over the clip at the back there, so you can see that's locked into place. Then you can drop the cooler down onto the actual processor. You might need to give it a little bit of a wiggle. The base is quite wide, and you should feel it fit in quite flush. Now looking from the other side, so this is the, the VRM side or the top edge of your motherboard. So we've got the clamp in the open position, which is towards your left. And you can see the, uh, the bar there, not quite over the latch. So what we wanna do is apply a little bit of pressure and just push this down. And you should find that the clip or clamp goes over the clasp there. Then you can release some of the pressure and it should hold in place. So now this is the part which most people absolutely detest, uh, myself included. So now what we want to do is to move this lever from this position, move it all the way around and then down into the locked position. Now this will require a little bit of effort, so uh, yeah, don't be too frightened and if ideally put your motherboard on something solid so it doesn't move around. So grab the lever, when it gets up to about here, 
you should start to feel some resistance on the, the metal clasp there, at which point you might want to swap fingers, but I will for this video, and then just gently pull it all the way around. There will be quite a lot of force needed, and then it'll get to the bottom and it'll lock into position. Now you can push it down a little bit further after there is a little bit of an indentation there, and essentially you want this bar to be absolutely flat at the back. Once it's completely flat at the back, that is fully locked into position. If you leave it in the position where it's slightly up, kind of in this position, it is still locked in, but not fully locked. So just make sure you push it down that extra little bit so that the plastic piece at the bottom there is completely flush and flat. Hopefully you can get a good idea of what that's like. So the next part is uh, really simple, and that is to plug in our PWM header into a suitable CPU header on the motherboard. This one's actually got two headers, CPU and CPU optional. So we can just go ahead and plug it into the first one here. And then you can choose to manage your cables a little bit if you wish to. So that's the CPU cooler actually physically installed and it will perform. But next we need to install the USB cable and also the 12 volt RGB cable to get it lit up. So the next part is going to be actually attaching the cable. So we're going to start first of all with the 12 volt RGB cable. This has got a four pin connector on one end and also a four pin connector on the other. This end goes into the motherboard. This end goes into the cooler. So let's remove the two plastic gaskets as we've done here, which you can hopefully see. So the pins are exposed. So the four pin one is on your left and the other one is on your right. So let's go ahead and plug in the four pin and that is basically all you need to do so the next part is to actually find your 12 volt header now on this particular board we've got two we've got one down in this corner here and if we flip the board around a little bit there's also one here at the top so depending on your motherboard you may find that it works out better to install it one way or the other uh, just for ease of use and for video purposes I'm going to use this bottom one here. So this is our header here and you'll see on your motherboard yours may be slightly different again. Just check there will be one pin which is a 12 volt and the other ones are the RGB. Actually on the connector itself there is a little arrow and the arrow shown is the one for the 12 volt header. So on this particular one 12 volt is on your left. So what we need to do is line that up and install it. So there we go that is our 12 volt RGB connection connected. You can if you want to, if this is actually in a system, just uh, tuck it around underneath, run it behind the motherboard. The choice is entirely up to you. The next one to do is to do the USB 2 header, which is gonna be on these here, and then plug it into the back of the cooler. So the next port actually on the back here is the one for the USB 2 port, which is this one here. And what we're going to do is to grab the three pin and it will only go in one way so don't worry about doing it wrong and it should like kind of latch into position. The other end of the cable is this one which is a USB and these are generally pinned exactly the same so there's nine pins on there one of which is blanked off. So then we can go to our USB header which is down here. You can choose whichever you want obviously if you've got two spare then the choice is entirely yours but just line up the blanked off pin with the blanked off pin and it should be very easy to do so just get your connection plug it in a little bit of wiggle and push it till it's firmly in and that my friends is essentially it the job is done and you're now ready to carry on building the rest of your pc okay so there you go you've successfully installed your amd stock cooler this is the amd wraith prism rgb the effect is the same for the wraith prism max and yeah the variants of all the ones with this type of connection, they all work in pretty much exactly the same way. Things I would suggest, obviously, if you can, do it whilst the motherboard is actually on a nice flat surface, preferably on a motherboard box, that sort of thing. Something which you can actually apply a little bit of pressure to it. Also, as well, make doubly sure that you've got the clamp in the right position, in the fully locked position, just in case if you should transport the PC that the latch doesn't actually spring back open and allow the processor cooler to actually come off, which would uh, potentially be disastrous to any other components inside the case. So let me know if this one's been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a like. And if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis, then hit that subscribe button and the chime icon, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you 
in the very next video. Thanks for watching.